Hello and welcome to this let's build video in the game Enshrouded. In this video I will show you how to build this treehouse. I won't rebuild the whole treehouse for the purpose of this video, but I will rebuild a large enough section to show every single building technique used. That includes the stairs leading up to the treehouse, uh, the platform that the treehouse is resting on, as well as all the woodwork and beams supporting the treehouse from below, as well as all the woodwork and the beams on the inside of the roof, and the custom made fireplace, and a flower bed with all the flowers in front of the window. And I will also show you how to make this balcony with the rounded corners, uh, among of course a lot of other small tips and tricks used in this build. Once you have chosen a location for your treehouse, hopefully one with a great view and the tree for your build, it is time to build a platform a bit above ground. Don't worry too much about the size of your platform, uh, you can always adjust it later on. What you have to worry about however is uh, the hitbox of the tree. And this problem kind of grow worse the further up you get and the tree will retain the hitbox down at the root level all the way up and it is actually possible to place stuff really close to the tree that you cannot remove later on and the only way you can get rid of it is by actually deleting your flame altar and resetting the whole point so if you build kind of a really large tree house it might be a really good idea to back up your save so you kind of get points reset points to go back to in case you kind of screw up with the building close to to the tree this is also the main reason why I opted for a design where the treehouse is kind of resting on one side of the tree with a supporting pillar below instead of having the tree centralized in the build because this way I only get the hitbox problem in kind of one corner of my build. I will wait a little bit with making the pillars and supporting beams below the platform because I kind of want them centralized and I don't really know how big the platform will be so I don't really know where the center is either. Uh, instead I will start with the stairs. Don't make the stairs too close to the tree because the hitbox, so you won't be able to walk up the stairs if it's placed too close. Also, uh, there's another problem. If I place single cubes here, which I can, I won't be able to modify or remove them later if they placed kind of inside the hitbox, so that also causes a problem. So it's a lot safer to have the entrance a bit out from the tree, kind of over here. I will start with the stairs here and I will make them six wide uh, because the door is four wide and I want them a bit bigger. This is of course like a matter of preference but I like the stairs to be a bit more impressive in front of the main entrance. As you may have noticed towards the end of making the stairs I was actually running out of ground for my stairs so I kind of put a little bit more of it. Anyway, time for the next step of the stairs and that is to grab the tarred shingle roof block and place it like this. Just one cube on each uh, stairs or step of the stairs all the way up and we will end up with this really nice uh, plank. Uh, following the stairs all the way down and then of course we do the same on the other side. I also want another plank just as the first one but a bit higher up forming the railing for the stairs. Uh, so we'll make some uh, temporary cubes here so these are three high and then I kind of make just a staircase formation with these ones like this. Uh, let's see, I probably see from this way all the way up. These I will remove later. These are just to be able to have something to place stuff on. And the same on the other side. One, two, three. So we grab our tarred shingle roof again and we just place it all the way up here along the railing, like this. And it might be easier at this point to just step up on the railing when you keep constructing it like this. And the same on the other side. And now we just remove all of the temporary blocks here. So, this. If you by mistake remove some of the railing, just um, press Y to undo. I 
I will also make a little pillar here at the start and the end of the stairs like this because I think that looks really nice. So let's do that. And same down here. Am I positioned correctly now? No, I was not. All right. Uh, maybe it's easy to actually do it from this direction to see where I'm supposed to go here, right? Yeah, that's it. And same over here. And now time for the magic. I used uh, normal windows for this. Uh, like this, you just place them. Super easy, and you get this really nice pattern all the way up, right? Looking really nice. You can, if you want to, of course, use other types of windows. I mean, I think this kind of looks all right as well. For variation and I mean you can also use the metal one so I mean there are several different styles uh, for this type of stair construction that you could uh, use I really like the wooden one because I think it melts together really really well with other materials so let's add the wooden ones on this side as well and stairs are done uh, leading up to the main entrance there is nothing really advanced involved in the next step because that's just putting up all the walls. Uh, I will leave, however, two blocks here of width out to the border of the platform, and that is to be able to plant some greenery along the walls. I am using the palm wood block, but of course that's also just a matter of preference, but I really like uh, the color contrast uh, to the platform and the surrounding trees. I might add some windows here on the side as well, but one thing I'm sure of right away is that I want a huge window leading out towards the balcony and the really beautiful vista outside. Uh, so let's add some beams up here uh, instead of walls uh, all the way across and some beam on the floor here as well. Uh, let's grab the doorway actually first. The door is going to be towards the corner. I also don't want the door to be this big uh, or by the wall segment. So a rather thin pillar and also window here above the door like this and we have to grab another one of these as well on the floor to fill up this little gap and then we grab a small pillar here to kind of oh that wasn't correct like towards the center more like this and also in the corner here like that and now we can grab our windows we will get these beautiful windows leading in to um, can I get this one to fit? Yeah, all right, there we go. Uh, leading into the living room. And also up here above the door, like this. Before adding the doors, I want to add thresholds here to the door and a different floor inside compared to the more sturdy and rougher uh, platform. But before we do that, let's add a bit of layers to the platform, or rather one layer more to make it a bit kind of sturdy looking. It's also good when we want to add uh, flowers later on, like this. See, this. I want to just add temporary stuff to stand on to be able to construct this. What I will do now is actually remove the original platform, but uh, thanks to the second layer below, I won't fall down. So let's do that. I am using the shroud wood block for floor because I think it contrasts nicely with the palm block. Like if you place it like this, you will get this uh, plank here along the edge. Uh, but if you instead let it go below the walls themselves like this, uh, you don't because then the plank uh, will end up well below the walls. And I think that looks uh, nicer as well. Let's see, like this. And all the way across of course. And now we have to fix our platform that now looks like this all around. Um, and the easiest way to do that is just grab uh, this long beam here and the platform material, the rough wood block and start filling in the gap here. On the side of the wall here, I will actually leave a gap between the edge of the platform and the wall that I plan to fill with the farm soil 
to plant greenery and flowers. So that was also the reason for the thicker uh, platform. Not only that, I think it looks good and sturdy. Let's just finish here. And the same here on the front, uh, where I also want to put a bit of greenery, but uh, of course not in front of the door itself. Next up is the roof, and I want a bit of overhang, but I will start with actually constructing a little beams going around uh, a bit outside of the main uh, body of the house as well. This is mostly just for detailing. Let's grab the roof. I want it to stick out a little bit more towards the kind of the porch and the, the front than I do towards the sides, so that should be all right. And I just all the way across. And also here sticking out a tiny bit towards the side, is that correct? Yes it is. Let's do the same from the other side, is that correct? Yes it looks like it is. Be careful when placing the roof close to the tree because if we place it in the wrong place you might not be able to uh, modify it later. But you can always undo so that's why you should check right away. Alright, now it's just making sure the roof meets in the middle. Okay, roof done. I will not remove the platforms that I used as scaffolding while constructing the roof because I feel like I might have need for them uh, yet. Uh, instead I will actually add some more uh, scaffolding uh, inside of here, or not scaffolding really, but just platforms to stand on, right? Because we are going to do some uh, beam work. Not all of the beam work just yet, but at least part of it. So uh, first of all I will add a bit more beams here on the sides. The wool segment I place over here is something that once I can no longer undo it, I will not be able to modify. Uh, so check really careful that it looks alright, and it does alright. Um, and same on the other side. I want a big window above the door and I want beams framing it. And the important things when doing beams below the roof is to not use the same material as you do for the roof. Here I'm using the same material and you see it kind of doesn't really look nice. If we take a different one, it doesn't really matter if we had to take this one or this one, but if we use a different material, you can see that now it doesn't really do that and it looks a lot, a lot nicer. So let's do that to kind of frame the window. When working close to the tree hitbox, you sometimes have to experiment with different angles to be able to, to place the cubes. Something that can sometimes be extremely frustrating. Anyway, done. Let's fill this up with windows. Like this. We can't really see it from the outside because of all the scaffolding, but it will look nice. I will to some degree mirror what I did on that side, on this side. Um, with a bit of a difference. I also don't really have to worry about the tree here because uh, there's no hitbox here. But anyway, I'll grab the roof tiles and this time I will actually fill the whole thing. So I will use the kind of roof as a wall so I get the same, um, what do you call it, the same texture as I kind of do for the frame of the window or for the whole wall. Um, so this is actually something you can do, like use um, the roof as, as a wall. Now we got this really nice wall segment here uh, that is the same as the frame uh, around the front side window. Now to something that I had planned to do a lot earlier in the build and that is put thresholds for the door and actually put the doors in as well. I kind of forgot about it. I had planned to do it at the same time as I made uh, the floor. Uh, so let's take the shelf, put it like this. It sticks up a tiny bit above the floor. Same on this side. 
Let's see, can I fit it where I want it there? And now we got this kind of annoying little plank in front of the threshold. And the way we get rid of that is we grab a floor tile and make sure it kind of extends below um, the shelf. Same on this side. So like this, and we got rid of it because now the floor is actually continuing below below the, the shelf. I was about to say below the threshold, well, the shelf threshold, I guess. Uh, put the doors in, kind of like this one and not the fully wooden one because I like how the stone is kind of framing it together with the frame you get from the, from the, well, the wool material, right? Okay, so doors in. I removed most of the scaffolding, but let's do the fireplace snakes because after that I can remove the last of the outside scaffolding because we no longer need to get up on the roof. For the fireplace I used the roughly cut stone block, some iron fence, the polished scrap brazier, rough linstone block and city wall block. And I will actually start by removing a bit of the floor again. I will substitute the floor for city wall block and the reason I do this is if you look at like a real home where you have a fireplace and uh, you actually usually have some type of other floor like fire resistant floor below the fireplace extending out a little bit to protect the floor from like sparks and stuff like that. Let's remove this wall and we need it to be one wider like five wide so I will remove this one as well like this. Uh, then I will actually remove a little bit of the wall uh, or the floor that I actually placed here to start with. We also don't need this one. Let's see, it extends out like this. Uh, then we'll grab our brace here and put it like this. We will also uh, grab our fence and put it like this more or less. And now we can construct the rest of the fireplace using flintstone. Okay, that looks nice from the inside. I do have to extend it up towards the roof as well, but let's do the outside first. Let's close up the back and add a little bit of chimney here, like this. I also had to make a little hole in the roof or cut a hole in the roof and extend the chimney upwards. Uh, so let's go up on the roof. I guess it's a matter of preference how high you want your chimney, but once you reach the desired height, it actually looks really nice to top it off with some roughly cut stone blocks. You will see once I get down a bit, because you get kind of this little edge sticking out towards, uh, well, towards the sides. And this is how it will look from the outside. And if we now go in, you can see it extend through the roof, or extend through the roof, and it looks really nice on the inside as well. Before I start with the rounded balcony, let's fill these lines here with farm soil. Uh, so this stuff I plant here got time to grow as I finish the rest of the build. So this needs to be two tiles high, so I actually need to add another row on top of it for stuff to grow, like this. I will do it all around the house. Let's plant a nice little mix of flowers and bushes here. If it says not enough free space, you can usually still plant if you just change your perspective. Uh, like this, right? I'll take this bush as well. Uh, maybe some uh, strawberries as well here. Maybe a little bush here as well. Uh, some grapple plants. I think grapple plants are one of the better looking plants in the game. Like this. And also some on this side. Maybe uh, one more bush here. After placing a bit of greenery around the house, it is finally time for the rounded balcony. For that, we need to clear our inventory and fill it with carved wooden nightstands. Uh, this is not actually very complicated at all. Uh, we just need a lot of patience for it. Uh, let's place the first one about here, uh, aligning with the wall. I think that was nice. Yes, it is. Uh, take the second one. 
Just let them merge like this together. And the third one. Uh, with R plus scroll wheel, you can rotate them. And I think uh, we should start car uh, like curving the balcony here. So let's just rotate this one a little bit and make them merge into each other like this. And the next one. A little bit more. Before we continue this, let's start with the other side so we make sure they meet correctly in the middle. So let's put this one here. Yeah, that looks good. And just same procedure. If they don't meet up correctly, like they don't do here, uh, but now at least we know where it should start to kind of uh, curve. Uh, we just have to pick these ones up and replace them. So nothing here really complicated, it just takes a lot of patience. Once we are happy with the first row, and the first row is the tricky one, the, the following ones are a lot easier, and we have restocked on more wooden nightstands. Uh, it is time for the second row on the inside, and this is to kind of get a nice wooden uh, touch on the inside as well, and not a bunch of holes. Just follow uh, the outer line and fill up with uh, nightstands like this. At this point it is time to remove a bit of the floor, well the upper layer of the floor that is, like this, and extend the lower layer. Uh, like I'll remove this one later, the floor here, but uh, I need to stand on something, right? Uh, like this, I don't know what I did here, I don't need this, and also here, like this, and I will remove this cube and this cube over on this side, and I guess the same on the other side here. grab my wooden nightstands and start fitting them out on the second row downwards like this and once you're done it's time to remove those uh, big blocks we just had to stand on here and let's remove those, preferably without falling down. Let's see if I can get this one from here. We don't need them, need them any longer. Like this. Uh, and we won't have this one either, or this one, or this one. Now it's time to add some floor here, like this. Uh, it will only be like one thick, not too thick, like it is on the outside. Um, let's switch to a smaller version here, like this. And we'll take those last parts with just uh, single cubes. Oops. Uh, yeah, of course, like this. Like this, and maybe over here as well, a few more. And same on the other side, we got few holes to fill here. Sometimes this can actually be easier to, to do from below where you see exactly where you should place stuff. Uh, let's see, like this. And the last one here. We've now got a rounded balcony and if we jump down here, uh, it also looks really nice and round from below. We can see that we can actually fit probably one more block there and a few over there as well. We'll do that later on when we add uh, the big pillar below uh, with all the beams that kind of are supposed to look like it is holding the structure up. When thinking about it, I think the beams are actually the logical next step, but I will just patch up this here and also over here, I guess. Let's see if it was something over here as well. Yeah, maybe one more can fit over there. Uh, I think that looks really nice right now. Anyway, uh, let's start with the beams. Um, switch to this one. And I think we'll use this one for that. I just start with a beam work that extends from the stairs 
like this. All the way across. Over here I will just make them twice as thick, so it looks something like this maybe it can extend out towards there and then we just add a little bit longer here like this like this maybe like this looks nice and then just one more like it on the other side So I think the pillar should extend down here, um, so let's just uh, do some beam work down like this. And then I want the beams to extend a little bit towards the left and right hand side like this. Now let's see, like this maybe. Yeah, that looks nice. So this is one, two, three, six cubes wide. Maybe I'll do like four cubes in this direction and one, two, three, four, and then next beam over here. Like this, it's the same size, yeah. I mean, this is just different ways you can do it. Like, just want something that kind of looks like it's supporting the rest of the platform. Uh, and I will do the same on the other side here. So that would be here, right? Then one, two, three, four, and here is the last one. I will fill the rest out here with the rough wood block, like this. Let's see, Just keep going like this, and also on this side here. Just so that they fit together nicely. Yeah, that looks all right. Yes, keep going here. I removed a bit of my scaffolding to be able to see what I'm doing. Maybe it's easier actually to do this from the ground. Yeah, I think so. Like this. Oops. Like this rather. And then I will just extend this one towards the ground as well. I will place a bit of scaffolding here to get kind of a beam work uh, close to the ground. Uh, you can rotate it for like different patterns, I guess. Uh, let's see if I can get this one where I want to, like there, right? Uh, over here as well. I just want them to fit together nicely. And then this corner as well. Come on. Maybe from this direction. Didn't manage to place that one, but there's always a solution. Just get the pickaxe. And no problem. Uh, the second problem here is that it doesn't really want to let me place it over here and there's a solution for that as well. You just remove a bit of uh, the beam here and then you can take this one, now you can place it and then you place um, the beams back like this. Come on, there you go. I will do the same on the other side. So just remove a beam there, I think one might actually be enough to be able to place in here. Yep, it was. And put the beam back like this and that's the first row and what I want to do here is actually put some flower soil so let's uh, put this one up or flower soil rather farm soil right like this just to be able to plant some greenery here this should be okay and I'll do some on the other side as well Um, maybe some here as well. It's, it doesn't really matter that much. I, I mean, I, I want this to kind of have a really rugged look anyway. You can't place the beams first, but you can place the scaffolding first and you can actually place uh, like the wood inside of the scaffolding. So let's do like this here. Just continue these rugged, rugged pillars down here. That's that correct way to kind of describe them. Rugged pillars or rough pillars, I don't know. Anyway, let's place it here. And the last ones over there. And all the way down to the ground. I think I also want to kind of put something over there. Um, but it starts to look like something I want it to look like. Let's put some plants around here. That's just to kind of get some greenery going. 
Sometimes it depends on kind of the perspective if it lets you plant or not. So you just um, try to walk around a little bit and look from different sides and different angles. That's nice. And I think I want to finish with like a little beam work up here as well. Like, um, let's see, like this. I'll remove the things sticking out there. And let's switch to this one. And just remove the stuff that is sticking out. Oh, here's a little cube that I need to fill up as well. I think this will look rather nice as support for the main platform. Now let's finish the build by doing the detailing inside of the house. Before heading into the house, I will actually add a little detail here with two pillars on either side to put some uh, lights on. Let's just put this one upwards here. You might be struggling a little bit with the hitbox from the tree. Um, you'll just have to experiment with kind of different uh, positions. Yeah, that's all right. And on the other side. And then we can take some uh, lamps here. Let's see, not enough free space. I'm standing too close to it. Um, I think here would be nice. And same about uh, up here, right? So like there, I think that looks really nice at the entrance. I once again placed a few temporary platforms here just to have something to stand on while doing uh, beams in the roof. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, maybe six out like this. Let's see on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, that would be there. Yeah, that looks nice. I mean, the fireplace is not really centered, but that doesn't really matter. Um, let's just extend these ones upwards like this. And down on the other side. And same with the other one. And add some beams here. Uh, okay, yes. Sometimes the character is really in the way for what you want to do, and like if you try to see what you're doing. Now, obviously, that was not a great placement. Was that good? Yeah, that looks a lot better. I think I get, got it where I wanted it. And let's grab our chandelier and try to put it in the middle so it should be there. And then let's see. Like this, I think that's in the middle. Yeah, it looks alright, and we can remove all the scaffolding that I put up down here. So now the beamwork in the roof is done, and it's time for the flowers in front of the windows. The flower bed in front of the window will require a bit more advanced trickery. Let's start by removing a bit of the floor. Add farm soil too high, two rows high here in front of the window. Now let's grab these beautiful benches and you can kind of see how close you need to position them for the farm soil not to clip through. Let's add one here, and they just uh, all the way across. Uh, we we'll probably have to put them double, like overlapping a tiny bit here for, for it to actually reach like this. And then the last one uh, over here, maybe like this. I hope it doesn't really clip through to the outside. I don't think it will. No, it doesn't. Right, great. Uh, add a little cube here in the corner. I uh, think that this will be nice with, um, it doesn't let me, all right. So sometimes when you place stuff, it doesn't really let you place other stuff. But what you can do is really like the longer stuff always works. So you just do like this because I want that cube over there. And then we take the smaller one and just uh, remove all the bits we don't need here. So that is all the way over here and the last one as well. And now we got a really nice flower bed and we just have to replace um, the floor in front of it as well. That was shroud wood. Let's see, again, try to fit stuff in here like this. And like this, I think we got it all the way. Always good to kind of check so I didn't clip through. Now we can just plant our flowers.
And once all the flowers have grown up, this will be a really nice flower bed. I have decorated the room a bit with paintings, carpets, and the flowers are about to grow up. Also a bookshelf over there. If you wonder about how to make flower pot and how to plant stuff inside of other stuff, I have a full guide about that. So I will link that in the description uh, below this video. Uh, there's also a bit of furniture here out on the balcony. Uh, for the bigger build, the one I showed in the beginning of the video, I just extended the build upwards by adding a staircase here leading upwards, uh, removing this wall where I now have put a window and kind of just extend the build uh, with more floors above the first one. But nothing of that was really other techniques than I used in the first floor, it was just more of the same. Anyway, if you liked the video, give a thumbs up. I mean, if you actually have watched all of the video, like 35 plus minutes, right? I kind of deserve the thumbs up, don't you think? Uh, also, uh, subscribe if you like more enshrouded content. I will make kind of a lot of more content for this game. I really like the building. Uh, I will probably also make uh, content for other kind of crafting building games as well. So if that's something that might interest you, also a reason to subscribe. Uh, also, comment something below uh, if there's something you want me to kind of make videos about. I might run dry on ideas and then it's always nice to have something in the comment section to look at uh, and kind of draw ideas from. And yeah, if there's something else you want to write, it always kind of help for visibility if there's some ongoing discussion in the comment section. At least I think that's how it works. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, yeah, this was the full build. Hope you liked it. Cheers.